Hello, hello, Mordi Mers here and welcome to the 11th round of Tata Steel 2021 and I would like to show you the game of Andrei Yesipenko with the black pieces, 18 years old super grandmaster from Russia, very talented young gentleman and he was with the six and a half points out of ten, uh, he was on the second place, just half point behind Anish Giri. So with the black pieces, uh, he plays against Ariantari. Ariantari, from the other hand, had only uh, four points out of 11, so he didn't uh, play really great in this tournament. So if Yesipenko wants to win the tournament, definitely he has to win, play something sharp against uh, Ariantari. So without further ado, let's see this game where Ariantari open with the white pieces uh, with the e4. We have e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop g5, so Rui Lopez on the board, a6, Morphy defense, bishop a4, and now d6. Uh, we have also castle, knight f6, attacking the central pawn, rook e1, defending, and now bishop d7. c3, pretty standard move, preparing d4, making a space also for the bishop. Uh, once black are ready, can of course strike with the b5, which is a pretty uh, common idea in the Rui Lopez. Uh, but now we have g6, preparing to flank to the bishop and uh, castle. We have d4 striking in the center, bishop g7 as planned, and now knight b2 d2. So developing uh, the, the last pieces, the bishop still stays on the on the c1, but it of course uh, will find the way uh, to develop as well. We have a castle, we have the bishop c2, so now any b5 uh, of course will not come with the tempo and i would like to just stop for the moment because the structures are very very similar uh, to some italian games i just show you a um, couple of days ago a uh, couple of these games we had on my channel so the main difference is that this bishop dark square bishop uh, doesn't stay on this diagonal so there are no tricks with the attack on the f2 so that's the one of the ideas. Uh, this bishop stays on this diagonal. So this is the completely different uh, setup. I mean, the setup is very similar, but the completely different ideas in similar setup. Just, you know, this fianchetto change the character of this position. We have knight h5, so uh, pretty standard stuff. This knight would like to come to the f4, uh, like in the Italian game. Uh, and now we have one game in the database where knight f1 was played, but here uh, we have uh, quite a novelty, d takes on e5 first. So uh, Ariantari didn't want that this uh, pawn attacks on the on the d4 and then the bishop would be quite powerful um, here on this diagonal. Uh, we have d takes on e5 and now knight f1 as planned. So where is this knight uh, going? Uh, definitely not on g3 as these two squares are, are restricted by the, uh, by the pawn, so that would make no no sense uh, but of course black have knight f4 and white knight is going to e3 so the idea is to centralize the knight on d5 it looks also very very attractive also is attacking this knight and now if black wants to stop that idea with the bishop e6 controlling uh, d5 then what we would have probably is g3 kicking the bishop and now black have a chance uh, to actually can of course play something like knight h3 and then uh, retreat to the to the g5 uh, however also can exchange the queens and now if the rook takes then of course the knight can jump to the to the e2 with the with the check maybe exchange for one of the bishops and keep the pair of the bishops if the knight takes uh, then probably something like bishop g4 now uh, the knight is under attack so probably knight g5, uh, maybe knight e6, and so on. A couple of uh, uh, lines which are very, very interesting, complicated. Uh, basically, uh, the dance of the minor pieces here. However, we have king h8. Now, king h8 idea is pretty simple uh, because it avoids the checks once f5 is played. So basically, it's a preparation for f5. Uh, we have knight d5 as planned, and now this knight can be eliminated, winning the pawn. Uh, so this is why Isipenko here played knight e6. So the knight get a little bit passive position here, also cannot dream about, you know, for example, jumping to d4. Uh, we have h4, and seems like Ariantari got 
about the control of this position and he said in the interview that from this moment uh, he feel really really great now uh, what is the idea maybe h5 however should Andrei Yesipenko actually worry about that what could happen if he played f5 uh, his plan striking the center uh, and he you know have to face this h5 and it's not much problem because first of all he has this uh, very simple idea f4 getting a lot of advantage on the king side so even if h takes on g6 then black doesn't need to take with the pawn but rather play something like knight g5 and now if white wants to win the pawn this is gonna be the best shelter for the king uh, the king gonna be inevitable there so it's a uh, uh, you know pretty pretty comfortable um, game here and uh, black shouldn't have any problem to uh, to construct some dangerous attack maybe even on the position of the king however we have h5 so andre yesipenko want to be solid here uh, we have bishop e3 developing the dark square bishop and now f6 so yesipenko always also create this bath tube uh, and he is pretty solid here we have b4 because if not on the king side then have to you know attack in the center or on the queen side we have knight e7 so what does Ipenko want to do here he want to remaneuver this knight to the better position but he has less space so it's not gonna be easy we have queen e2 we have knight c8 so trying to bring the knight maybe to the center maybe to the b6 uh, so let's see we have c4 now and here queen e8 and now Ariantari immediately strikes for the c5, restricting two of these squares. So the knight doesn't have an easy life now. We have a5 attacking the pawn, defending, and now knight a7. So this knight made quite a journey, uh, already three moves instead of one move. Uh, but yeah, the plan was definitely different. Uh, and this move c4, c5 was uh, maybe unexpected by uh, Yesipenko. We have bishop b3 now. Now, and here is the moment where actually black had the quite nice chances to improve the position so the idea is bishop b5 bishop b5 the queen has to move somewhere uh, and then play a4 the idea is to lock the queen side because black anyway gonna gonna attack with the f5 on the king side uh, and then let's say after bishop a2 play bishop c6 and then bring the knight to b4 so this knight uh is going to to come to b5 but all of this uh queen side gonna be completely locked uh, so for example let's play something like rook a to d1 pretty natural and now knight b5 and in the right moment this knight's uh, on also gonna jump to the to the d4 so pretty simple simple idea however we have knight b5 immediately uh, and now that was the chance uh, for Ariantari actually to get probably winning position but in very very complicated line so I'm not surprised that he didn't find it so first a4 it's uh, maybe a little bit intuitive maybe not because now he would have to um, lock the position a bit uh, and then this knight would have to go somewhere so of course not go back but probably something like knight b to d7 bishop d4 e takes on d4 and now it looks like this pawn gonna be pretty lonely here however after f5 it's gonna get a lot of support so it can be you know pain uh very painful uh, position of this uh, pawn for white pieces probably white would have to play e5 uh, that's the best move and after f takes on e5 knight e5 maybe uh, knight f4 as you see this this line is already very very complicated the queen have to move somewhere uh, so probably better to play knight f4 rook f4 queen d2 and now the rook is under attack uh, the pawn is under attack it's a bit tricky here uh, and it seems that black can actually win the knight because this is free knight uh, the problem is that after bishop e5 we're gonna have g3 and now the rook has to move somewhere but then we're gonna have the checkmate so this is very very tricky position which is of course very difficult to calculate uh, of course the, the rook cannot come here because it's 
it's hanging here and once it's taken then then also this bishop is hanging so probably would have to play something like g5 and after g takes on f4 g takes on f4 uh bishop f7 still not that that easy uh for white to play that even have exchange extra uh but have to exchange one of the bishops so probably that would be the best way of exchanging the bishops after queen f7 uh then win the bishop and continue the game yes there are some rook g8 but rook g5 and everything is completely fine with the position and white with the extra exchange uh, should actually do pretty good in this position so uh, as you already see it's very very long very complicated line so a4 we cannot blame uh, ariantari uh, bishop c4 this is what he played we have a takes on b4 a takes on b4 exchanging the rook so the plan is that white yes have the rook on the open file control all of this open file but this is a file it's far far away from the action moreover uh, all of these squares are actually controlled by black so Jesse Penko said, okay, in the worst case scenario, white will give up the, the you know, white square bishop and I'm going to get the par pair of bishops and going to have very comfortable game. And then if this knight is exchanged, then the rook will have uh, access point. But of course, that would be very, very risky and unlikely white going to do that. So he just strikes on the, on the king side. And now all the magic is gonna start pretty soon uh, first we have e takes on f5 g takes on f5 knight g5 this knight looks like very dangerous so uh, we have exchange here and now f4 and now this is the moment where you can pause the video and find the winning continuation but for white because white is on move and the winning continuation for ariantari while i enjoy my cup of tea So the position is extremely interesting. First of all, if the bishops move, for example, uh, to d2, which is pretty logical move, this is what um, definitely Yesipenko calculated. Uh, his knight finally gonna, you know, get centralized on the d4 with the tempo on the queen, and this knight gonna be extremely strong. Uh, also, the attack on the king side is inevitable and uh, probably gonna materialize and gonna attack the position of the king so very very nice position to play however Yesipenko in this position missed the move we are looking for and this move is rook a8 now what is this move it's just actually the, the rook is hanging the problem is that the queen which is attacked now it's also the defender of h5 so first of all the rook cannot be taken because we're gonna have a check made here bishop h6 is everything you can do here uh, and you're gonna get this beautiful checkmate with the double check so uh, that would be disaster so probably the best what black could play would be f3 however it leads to the the lost end game so uh also this is what isipenko didn't want to play what would happen is exchanging uh, most of the pieces here uh, but at the end winning the pawn on e2 and also these two pawns uh, are too vulnerable to actually uh, you know stand so so these two pawns would be lost and white would uh comfortable win this position so uh Yesipenko didn't want to go for that this is why he want to save the queen queen g6 and now we have rook f8 bishop f8 and only then bishop d2 so what just happened uh is very very similar but now there is the huge difference because what to play now your knight cannot come just to the d4 like before because your pawn is hanging on e5 before it was defended by the queen so that huge difference so this is why we have knight a3 attacking the bishop bishop d3 uh, also with the tempo on the queen and now queen g5 defending this pawn on e5 however after queen e4 andrei yesipenko resigned so what a beautiful attack this rook a8 was pop just mind-blowing very very beautiful and um ariantari in the interview said yeah this is the dream of every uh, chess player that would like to win in style you know attacking chances some tactics co combinations and and that this is what happened in this game and this was his first win in the tournament now now why andrea yesipenko resigned here he didn't have a chance if he 
he wants to still um, defend this pawn, uh, he also has to defend, because we're gonna have the checkmate on the h7, he also have to move the queen probably to g7, this is the only move, uh, but then simply bishop c3, and in the next move, we're gonna have bishop e5 winning the game. Uh, of course, the bishop cannot come here, because it's it's restricted by the pawn, uh, and for the same reason, uh, this c4 is restricted. So the knight cannot come and, and defend it extra. So uh, if you play something like, let's say, bishop e7, and uh, then after bishop e5, uh, we're gonna have, of course, winning position. And even if we have something like bishop h3 trying to checkmate, uh, that is, of course, not possible because after bishop e5, the queen cannot move because it's pinned. So this is why after queen e4, Andrei Yesipenko resigned. Uh, very beautiful game. And I would like to show you what happened uh, in in the in the 11th round Anish Giri Fabiano Caruana Alireza Firuzia draw these games. Uh, Anish Giri draw against Magnus Carlsen. Magnus Carlsen has his last chance to actually win the tournament. Now it's uh, possible only in the theory, maybe on paper. He has six points, two rounds to the end, uh, so it's uh, literally not possible. If he has six and a half and Anish Giri has seven, then he would be half point behind and with the two wins, maybe he could get at uh, the first place. Now it's not even possible. Uh, uh, Jordan Van Forest won, so he got the second place so far, uh, seven together with Firuzia and Caruana, who draw the game between themselves. Uh, that was also very sharp, interesting games ended with the draw. Uh, and uh, other, uh, as you see, uh, Yesipenko, Andri Yesipenko has six and a half points, so it's no longer possible that he gonna win this tournament. He had his chances, uh, but Ariantari actually won and with the five points he is just on minus one in this tournament so these are the standings and if you like this video of course press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss uh, another games another rounds from tata still 2021 press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one